What is up everybody, Josh here again, and today we have an Icarus Week 88 update. This week they've made some huge changes to farming. They also have the announcement of the Seeker premiere that's going to be premiering on their YouTube channel and some future update notes. Let's get into it, shall we? Icarus Week 88 farming update. Icarus Week 88 brings crop plot changes and farming changes to the game. They've revamped farming, introducing early in-game dirt mounds and five new items. They've also made interaction more in world week 88 is here and with the new frontiers expansion only two weeks away they have a lot to talk about this week they made revamps to the farming system following community discussion a couple of weeks ago and the changes allow you to interact with crop plots introducing a more robust early game farming system and adds five new items to support those changes they're also calling for feedback on a proposed arachnophobia mode so if you're someone who suffers from this which my wife is you know someone who does exactly we want to hear your thoughts on the proposed ideals in the comments yes do it and they talk about the seeker documentary series and its premiere this weekend so the seeker if you haven't already in the last update they they already kind of touched on this the seeker is a icarus documentary series and it is the third installment of the series on august the 12th at 6 p.m edt they will be premiering the seeker join them i will be there and they go into some core farming changes we're going to read a lot of this and then we're also going to show you everything all the news changes and, and everything in the game so a few weeks ago they asked about proposed changes to the farming system and this is them implementing those changes the most impactful change is the way they interact crops. Previously, you had, they had their own UI, but they are now interacted with in-world. They do not have a UI, so you do not put items into the seed slot anymore or can hold them there anymore. Crops can also now be harvested by sickle as well as hand. So that means that you can also farm them by hand and sickle now. Sickle, of course, giving you the bonuses to usually giving you more. They have created a seed for every single item in the game now that used to be able to be planted so now you have to have the seed instead of the item itself to actually grow them in the crop plot and of course farming talents are now changed to no longer apply it to the plot but actually it's applied to the seed when you put it into the crop plot so the person who is growing the crops has to have the perk for example evergreen where the crops won't spoil you now have to have that perk when you're planting the seed for that to not spoil it is not based on the crop plot anymore crop plots also have the auto reseed allowing you to plant a seed once and then reap the harvest when it is fully grown while not interrupting the growth cycle so they mentioned that existing crop plots will be converted to the new system and you'll be seeded with anything that was already growing if you're unfortunate like me and didn't have anything growing because you thought it might mess up with the new system and you had kumara and stuff like that you have to re-get those if you already had kumara and stuff growing it should reseed and you should be good to go all power and water connections will have to be reconnected which is a huge inconvenience and if you have the farming talents you'll want to reseed these to get the bonuses as talents no longer craft alterations on the crop plot but instead apply when a farmer plants the seed and any inventory items will be placed in the bag on top of the crop plot to be retrieved unfortunately mine disappeared lucky me we're gonna go over the new farming changes as well before we switch over to demonstrating of course you got all the new seeds which we'll show you and the chance of getting seeds is improved when you use a sickle so you use a sickle when trying to get seeds they did add the watering can the stone shovel which is used to make the mounds and the metal shovel its behavior has been adjusted to be used to spawn in dirt mounds so the metal shovel is not new but it is now able to be used for dirt mounds and they added the new workshop crop plot which is the aeroponic crop plot in the workshop and they mentioned the early game farming the dirt mounds is a new addition as far as what they added they added the dirt mounds and the watering can the stone shovel which is easy to make of course in your inventory just keep in mind that the soil whenever you do the early game farming with the shovel is called infertile soil so it does reduce crop growth speeds by 50 percent so it is kind of early farming really bad but it's meant to just basically get you into farming but it does prove a valuable option for generating food early in the game and for decorating which means that you could basically plant with the no spoil part you could plant little mounds around your base and decorate it with flowers or reed flowers or whatever you want to decorate it with which is pretty cool and of course any farming talents are applied to dirt mounds as they apply to crop plots that didn't change 
and towns are applied, allowing seeds to be planted into dirt mounds to receive the same perks. The most notable difference is that they will not reseed such as crop plots will because when harvested, you'll basically have to redig because it's a one-time use thing, so you have to redig, and we'll demonstrate that here very shortly. And they go on to talk about the new seed recipes, and they have the berry bar, which is a new craftable item you can craft in your inventory, crackers, seed bread, animal feed, and seed oil. So let's show you all the new things. So we're going to start with the new items, and the first one is the wood shovel here in tier 1. Made with wood, stick, and fiber. It can be used to make dirt mounds on dirt or grass, or shovel snow off your roof. The second item they added was the watering can. It's right next to the old metal shovel. And of course this shovel is for dirt or bury a friend. <laughs> and the watering can, of course it's used to water crops. A small area in front of you. As far as ingot, leather, and iron nail. And it is made at the anvil. You also have the aeroponic crop plot. And it is researched for 500 ren and 250 exotics. And crafted for 250 ren each. It will increase your planted growth speed by 25%. And your crop yield by 25%. And the spoil time of harvested items by 25%. And it is also connected to water and power. We'll show you this here shortly. So we got three items that we can craft in our inventory as well. We got the wooden shovel that's brand new. And you can craft it for wood, stick, and fiber. We also have the berry and seed bar. Provides the berry and seed modifier. And it consumes one stomach slot. Gives you 75 maximum stamina. Minus 10% stamina consumed by tool action and minus 10% water consumption. And it's kind of like a granola bar. And it does expire. But it takes about 5,400 seconds to expire. You also have seed animal feed. That will give your animals 125 maximum stamina and plus 50% stamina regeneration. We're going to make that and we're going to feed our animals a little bit later. Of course, it's not new, but in the anvil, we have the shovel. Right there. And we also have the new watering can. And it requires ingot, leather, and iron nail. And of course, to garden, you'll need a seed. And you might be wondering, how do you get seeds? Well, there's multiple ways to get seeds, guys. The very first and easiest way, if you already have a garden established, is probably just to go ahead and use a sickle on your existing crops. And that will give you seeds. As you see, we got two avocado seeds. And it automatically replanted the seed back. Of course, if you don't want that to be planted in there again, you could just hold E to remove the plant. And that will remove the plant, and you can place another seed in there. And of course, to plant a seed, what you'll need is you'll need to put the seed on your bar. This will give you a little ghost icon of what the full-grown plant will look like. And you left-click to plant it, like so. So any plant that you see out in the wild, if you go and use a sickle on it, you'll get a higher chance of getting seeds. Not always, but you may get seeds. See, we just got some wheat seed there from wheat. Some corn seed from corn. And a lily seed from some lily. Also got some coffee here. And got some coffee seed. And so on. Basically anything that you can gather out with a sickle you can get seeds from and that's one of the most effective ways to get it you can also get it by just kind of harvesting it but i think it's a lower chance now you may be wondering about kumara and avocado and strawberry and those seeds you can get them from the ones if you have them existing but if you don't they don't grow naturally out in the wild so that means that there's only two ways for you to get the seeds and that is simple quests simple quests I have been told have been updated so you can get them from there or you could go and drop down with with the workshop seeds and open up a seed pack if you drop down with the seed pack and right click and consume it you'll see it'll give you five seeds now instead of the actual items themselves so seed packs are actually seed packs now and you could take that and use it to grow you some watermelons so let's talk a little bit about the watering can. The watering can can be put into any kind of bench that has water, like the kitchen bench, and you can fill it up like you see here. So you can also go up to the uh, water source or any kind of water source like this and hold E and drink. That will fill up your water can. And then you can hit right click to empty it. That seems like the only way to actually fill up the water tank. It doesn't look like when you have it out and you're in the water. You don't fill it up like that but you can hold e and drink and it'll fill up the water can 
course, if you want to water some plants, you can. And you can hit right click to water the farming plot. Um, did it just. Looks like it has a huge radius. Alrighty, so this is the part of the video where we do some testing. So we got our little trusty water can here and a little test plot set up in front of us. We're going to kind of see how far in front of us. Let's see. There's about. Right there's about there. So you see how it's kind of blocked and grid off with concrete. So we're going to left click right here in the middle of these and see how far it goes. See how far the AOE area is. Wow. That is, that is quite a far AOE area. At least five wide and about four out, it looks like. Maybe three on the sides. A little bit less. So, it's in an area in front of us. Let's try it right in the very middle of this. Okay, and now we're in the very, very middle of this, well, kind of a test pattern here. And uh, we're going to see how much the water goes and a we maybe it goes behind us as well you know we're gonna test this because science alrighty here we go so it is behind you as well looks like but not very far behind you quite a bit of that was actually watered that is a huge radius so it looks like it's about three to four out from you and then about, well, I don't know. It could be maybe two to three out to your sides and then one behind you, it looks like. Maybe not so much behind you, so pretty much right in front of you. But that's gonna water a ton of crops the manual way. Of course, if you don't have the iron crop plots or the hydroponics, you could do it with the water can. And of course the water can does have about four clicks until it's completely Actually, for about four or five clicks until it's completely empty. So another new item they added is the aeroponic crop plot. And this is what it looks like. Pretty basic. Looks like a, well, just like a little box. And it is connected to water and electricity. As you can see here, we have them connected to water and electricity. And of course, any crop plot you had before, you're going to have to reconnect them to water and electricity if you had them before. As stated in the update, it's kind of a hassle. We're going to have to go ahead and replant all these, really, and redo the crop plots, which kind of blows. But, but these are the aeroponic crop plots and the best option for a farmer on Icarus. It uses a mix of nutrient-dense mist and rich soil to promote growth and yield. And that gives you 25% yields that we mentioned earlier. And you can actually inspect these, actually, and see all the modifiers for it. You can do that with any crop plot as well. You can see the growth process as well. And as you can see, we just pretty much go through here and hit E. What we'll do is we'll gather, get seeds, and replant all at the same time. And you can also use your sickle now with crop plots, as we mentioned earlier. And we also have the Larkwell Martina sickle, which gives you 175 yield from reaping plants. Of course, titanium will give you better. So we're just gonna use the titanium for now. I'm going to reseed it. Of course, you can't damage crop plots as well. They are not damageable now, which is pretty cool. We're going to completely go through here and just reseed our whole garden the easy way with the sickle. And get tons of crops from it and seeds. And then we got a little box here. We're just going to throw our seeds in there. You can hold left control and shift and left click to transfer all seeds at once. And now all those are reseeded and growing another set. <laughs> also, the same thing works with fertilizer. Now you don't put fertilizer in the crop plots anymore. You just kind of put it on your bar and then select it and you'll see a little icon pops up, fertilize crop. And you left click and fertilize that crop and you'll see it adds a fertilizer modifier right there basic fertilizer that we put in there and it's for about 1200 seconds so you just go through here and left click all of your crop plots so the only downside to the changes is that you can't have multiple fertilizers in a crop at a time once you left click it gives you that timer so 
that's pretty much the the way you fertilize now. You can still water with a canteen, like so, and it does give it a 600 timer. So for 600 seconds, this crop plot will now have water if you were to hand water stuff. And of course, same thing with water can. I just don't have any water left, but if you were to water this with water can, it'd be 600 seconds. It would give you water. You can also now dig with wood and metal shovels and leave little holes in the ground like this called a dirt mound, which you can also hold X to remove like so. But these will allow you to plant one crop per mound and they are one time use only. So we're going to take some wheat here and we're going to plant it in these and they're going to grow. Now, if you hold E to interact with it or hit E, you'll notice it does have infernal ground, which means that your negative 25% planted crop yield and minus 50% growth speed. So it's going to be twice as slow to grow and yield 25% less than a crop plot would. But this is a great way for early farming because you can make a wood shovel straight off the bat and it is very, very cheap to make a wood shovel, which was only wood sticks and fiber. And we're going to water these and let them grow. It also seems like you cannot add fertilizer to the dirt mounds, maybe because they are in fertile ground. I don't know, but it will not give you an option when you select to put fertilizer in it. Another reason why these are a great addition is for decorations. So that means you can pretty much put flowers like reef flower or forest flower, whatever you want to grow for a decoration. Some of them look like flowers. You can use them as flowers, as decorations. And you can plant them now anywhere that you're able to use the shovel, which is pretty neat. And we can also see that the green thumb and evergreen, all the crop plots perks that I have are crop perks that I have. They are being applied to the hole in the ground. And it does say crop plot up here. <laughs> and once they're done, all you got to do is hit E and it says press E to harvest. And you harvest it and it disappears because you have to make a new hole. And start the process back over again. Like so. So that is the early farming. Hmm. Whichever one will I choose. So we now have the seed animal feed and all you have to do is bring it up on your bar after you craft it in your inventory for 10 seed and five wheat. Bring it up on your bar and then get in front of your, your buffalo who's, who's head banging and just right click it to feed it a seed. Yeah. Did you like that? See, he's nodding in approval. We're going to access the inventory and see that he has for, it looked like about, it could have been about 900 seconds, his 1,000% health generation. Wow. And then he'll have 50 plus stamina regeneration and 125 maximum stamina. So he's actually got a decent stamina bar now. Yeah. That's pretty cool. So we're going to go back and check out the MOA. And see how good it is now. With the new food buff. Alrighty. We're going to grab the MOA here. And we're going to go ahead and feed it. We're going to select it on our bar. Right click to feed it. And it's gone. So we know it ate it. And it's got a little bit of bigger stamina bar, too. Of course, if you use the husband tree talents as well, you can get better perks and stuff like that with mounts. I don't have any currently. This is just without any perks at all. Just basic MOA. Basic buffalo. Going through the ash trees here. Oh no, <laughs> it's stuck in a tree. But yeah, stamina is okay. It's not the greatest still. It could be much better. But it looks like they may be building up with some foods to add to mounts that you can give them extra stamina. That's pretty cool. 
We also had the seed cracker, which is added into the cooking station. It'll give you 100 stamina and minus 15% stamina consumed by tool actions. And you can make it in the cooking station. And I've also seen it here in the marble kitchen bench. Seed bread will give you 150 maximum stamina, minus 20% stamina consumed by tool actions, and plus 15% experience gain. So it's another experience food. We also have seed oil, and it is in the mortar and pestle and the material processor. And it is crafted for 15 seeds for one seed oil. Thick oil extracted from seeds. And here at the material processor, we're also going to see seed oil on the bottom there. So the seed oil is an intermediary resource that could be converted to biofuel or the alternative for a crude leather recipe. So in a composter, doesn't matter which one, you can use both of them. But in a composter, you have the new seed oil. You can put that seed oil on there and it will fill up a can. We're just going to grab an empty can and see how much one seed oil fills up. Not a lot. Just a little slither. But as seen here, it can make some biofuel. So if you've got a bunch of seed oil, you can make biofuel with it. Doesn't seem like it's worth it, but if you've got a lot of seeds, maybe just get rid of them that way. Yeah, sure. So we're in our handy-dandy electric textiles bench, and we are looking at the cured leather recipe, the original one. That's the OG one, guys. We're going to look at this one. This is the cured leather one with seed oil. So you could take one seed oil and leather and make one cured leather with it. So, yeah, that's a thing you could do. So they also mentioned arachnophobia mode and that they're currently looking into a way of introducing spiders and arachnophobia mode into Icarus. And they want to have the settings in the settings menu that allows for this to be toggled on and off and kind of give some concept art of what they would look like if they are toggled on, changing it into an alternative. If you are someone who has any level of arachnophobia, well, not me, but my wife is, <laughs> or knows the way who does, love to your thoughts on the proposed concepts. Feel free to leave your feedback in the comments below. In all honesty, when it comes to the arachnophobia mode, definitely a good option to have for people who are scared of spiders. So put it in the game and make it whatever you need to make it that will not scare the crap out of people and spiders. So I agree with that quite a bit. I personally won't be probably playing with it on because i'm not scared of spiders and i want the full game experience the way it is originally i don't necessarily do the arachnophobia mode but to each their own so oh and by the way did you know there's a new dlc coming out <laughs> august 24th got a video on it on the channel check it out and guys they still need money 5.99 8.99 interior decorations this is actually I think this is actually well worth it, to be honest with you. If you didn't get the supporters edition, I got the supporters edition, so I get them all for free. But this is actually really well worth it. <laughs> Sticks is too, honestly. That's a lot of missions for Sticks. I'd get them, definitely, if you're enjoying the game. Support the work. That's, you know, it'd mean a lot to them. So we got the chains log. The chains log. Change log? Change log. In the new content section, we're going to go over the most prominent thing. Pretty much in this whole section is what we've already went over, but this is interesting to note. There is a 25% chance to get a seed when harvesting by your hand and 50% chance when using the sickle and base 50% when growing as a crop so it's basically you'll get 50 percent of the time you'll get a seed with a crop and then if you use a sickle it'll be another 50 percent that'll be 100 percent chance of getting a seed so you might want to use the sickle guys when you do your harvesting it was also mentioned here the animal feed can be now fed to your mounts and also can be placed in the food troughs as well guys so right here confirms that it is five clicks it is 5,000 water and it uses 1000 water per click they also mentioned that crop plots planted in sunlight provide zero percent growth speed bonus and crop plots in darkness receive negative 50 percent growth speed modifier crop plots in greenhouses receive a growth speed bonus based on the number of glass building pieces nearby making it parity with the old system they also added some hints about feeding mounts raw food and animal feed and as we stated before sickles cannot damage crop plots at any stage of the farming process now 
That's it for that section. Let's go over to fix section and see what we got there. Looks like the updated description for exotics to mention using the orbital exchange interface or OEI to send them to orbit. Yeah, that looks like that's it for that section. We're going to skim over this guys real quick and see if there's anything interesting. Looks like we might be getting an industrial round table and they added the new exotic icon, the red icon. Looks like we're going to get a rock dog statue as well. Talking about tier three and tier four communicators. Oh, looks like maybe one of the missions is going to be involving a croc plot. Looks like we're going to have slug trails. Talking about the flaxes and the brambles. Looks like mission five will get a communicator. And in mission six, we'll get a scanning device. The predator bird used to circle like a vulture. <laughs> the dreadwing. Reduce the number of creatures that drop pyretic items. That dog statue. And it looks like predator birds are going to swoop down to corpses, which makes sense. This is interesting. Added item watering can. Added item backpack farmer. And backpack medic. Fix floating rocks in Tecton outpost. So we're getting a new outpost. All oh, fixes for Mo dialogue. Lowering background noise. Mo. New frontiers added one off consumable character level boosts. The prompt for this is shown on the difficulty warning pop up when selecting either a Styx or Prometheus level mission or open world. If your character is less than the level that you would be boosted to, level 10 for Styx, 20 for Prometheus, this boost will bring the character up to the specified level and be consumed. You are given one boost per map for your account. This is designed for new players to be able to jump into these maps at an appropriate level or help level a second character. So we're getting some kind of item that we can redeem once per map to level your character to the suggested map level, which is 10 or 20. And thank Jesus, they added a checkbox to hide the difficulty warning message when selecting sticks and Prometheus missions or open world. And this could be toggled on and off in the user interface section of the gameplay settings. Whenever you get to select sticks, you can check off do not show again and hit confirm and thank god it won't show it again yay and that's it for this change log this week this is the part where we thank the late night crew khx wolfie sergio sandy silver john diana emc2 and now rod knob who is upgraded from supporter to late night crew. Welcome to late night crew. Thank you all so much for being supporters of the channel. We greatly appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you guys for watching. Don't forget if you like what you see to like comment and subscribe to our channel. Subscribing will get you great Icarus update videos just like this and content videos as well. We also do content videos for other games as well. If you're interested in survival games, we love everything survival. And until next time, hopefully we'll see you next time. Peace.